How to start a photography side hustle. What would you do with an extra thousand dollars a month? Or maybe three thousand? That'd be pretty sweet to have. I'm gonna show you how to create a photography side hustle so that you can create that financial freedom to go on more vacations, start a college fund, to literally do whatever you want because you'll have extra money from something you enjoy. It's showtime. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I run a multi six figure boudoir studio in Silicon Valley, California, and I love making money with my camera. Now, I know from teaching tons of photographers all over the world for the last decade, not everyone wants to run a full fledged business. Maybe you enjoy your nine to five job, you make really good money, you're very happy there, you like photography, and you just want to make some extra cash. Totally fine. Most people that get into photography professionally do it because they love photography. And then you learn how much it takes to actually run a business. And they're like, nah, I'm cool. I'd rather just enjoy the photography as a hobby or maybe make some money with it once in a while. And knowing that, invaluable. It doesn't make you any less of a photographer or anything. That's amazing that you know what your limits are. So how do you make a little bit extra money with your camera? I'm gonna give you my five biggest points that you need to cover in order to start making money as a photographer. Firstly, what do you want to shoot and what do you not want to shoot? Two, prices and products. Three, building a strategic portfolio. Number four, getting the word out. And number five, this one, I'm not going to tell you about till we get there because it is the number one reason that everyone fails when they try to do the first four things. So stick around till the end. Otherwise, don't even bother. I know that sounds harsh, but seriously, the only way this stuff's going to work is with number five. So there we go. All right. So number one, what do you want to shoot and what do you not want to shoot? Super important to know both of those things. As a side hustle, families are easy money. Photographing kids, high school seniors, kids sports photos, corporate headshots, product photos, all those things are great. Real estate. Also, you can go photograph houses and buildings, things like that. Great way to make money on the side with your camera. I definitely recommend avoiding newborns unless you've gone through proper safety training and you know how to do it safely. Same thing with weddings. Weddings are a monster. And if you just want to do this as a once in a while thing, please leave weddings to full-time wedding photographers because it is a tremendous amount of responsibility and risk if you show up on somebody's big day, don't really know what you're doing and can't deliver a consistent service and product. I can redo a family session. I can't redo somebody's marriage. I can't redo somebody's wedding. So that's something really important to keep in mind. Even if it's for friends, hopefully you're going to hang out at your friend's wedding and they don't ask you to shoot it. That's not cool. But I would really leave newborns and weddings to the full-time pros who really, really know what they're doing and have all their bases covered. And there's a ton of other things you can do instead. Two, prices and products. Your pricing will dictate the kind of clients that you have. Now, even though this is just a side hustle, it doesn't mean you can shortchange yourself. If you're only charging a hundred bucks for a family session and they get all the photos edited, you're going to get clients who demand everything from you want ton of edits on everything, extra locations. They're going to want you to add in the family member who couldn't make it and change everybody's outfits in Photoshop. And then you've just put in like 30 hours of work for a hundred bucks and you're resentful and you hate it. And now you don't want to do photography anymore. And if they were friends, they're probably not your friends. That's not a way to win. However, you charge 500 bucks and maybe they get 15 to 20 photos. That's cool. Even better if you sell actual products. This is prints, wall art, albums, and then they can add on digital products as well, but they don't just get everything for doing the shoot with you. Again, just because this is a side hustle doesn't mean you can't charge real prices. And you're gonna be so much more satisfied with the money you make and the work you do when you charge in a way that shows you respect yourself and your work. Now, it might seem easier to just do a shoot and hand over a link to a Google Drive or something like that. But let me break down why it's better to do in-person sales and actually sell products. You do a one hour session with somebody, plus say one hour of, of other work, and that's your phone calls, your, your travel time, maybe a little bit of editing. Even if it's three hours to do this family session between the editing, the shoot, all your travel time, your paperwork for $500, let's say. 
and that's that's a pretty decent like shoot and burn sale. Five hundred dollars for three hours. You're like, that sounds great to me. Why wouldn't I want that? Well, if you do in person sales and you're selling at least fifteen hundred dollars by adding an extra two hours worth of work because you're going to do an in person sales session, actually order their products from a print lab wrap things up when they get there, rather than three hours for 500, five hours for 1500 sounds way better. I'll put in an extra two hours for $1,000 every day of the week, right? When you break it down like that, it's a no brainer. So I suggest doing that because you'll work less and make more money. And even though this is a side hustle and you're doing it because you enjoy it, you will enjoy it so much more if you have respectful clients paying you real money. Uh, so something to consider when you are trying to talk yourself into just doing shoot and burn. You'll love this so much more in the long term and you'll have better quality clients. All right, number three, building a strategic portfolio. Notice strategic, super important. Two reasons. Firstly, it will help you bring in clients. So you can do model calls to get people in the door. Basically, I'm gonna waive my session fee if I can use your images to market my business. So this is a marketing campaign that you can do. It's a way to get marketing photos and you're getting new clients in the door who are gonna buy your prints, your albums, and your digital packages. That's where you make your money anyway, not the session fee. So when you're charging this way, session fee plus products, you have more wiggle room to incentivize people to come in if you wanna do it with price. And a model call is a great way to help you build that portfolio because you're still making money on the back end. The other reason your portfolio will be strategic is because it shows who you work with and potential clients will be able to see themselves in your work. So by that, I mean, if you wanna photograph families, then photograph the kinds of families you wanna work with. Don't just shoot a bunch of 21 year old Instagram models and then, you know, get frustrated because families aren't booking you. Same thing if you wanna shoot kids, high school seniors. Photograph the kids and the high school seniors that you want to photograph. Use those images to then attract more similar clients. And you don't need a huge portfolio to get started. You just need enough work to show that you've done this at least once, preferably more than once, and that clients know what to expect from you. All right, number four, getting the word out. You can go on your Instagram if you have a personal Instagram account, your Facebook group, and say, hey, I'm doing photography now. Anyone wants family portraits or whatever, I got you. That might get you a couple people in the beginning, but it's not sustainable. Now, you don't need to build an entire company and have these giant ad campaigns and email automation and, and all these other complex systems but there are other easy ways you can get new people in the door. If you want to shoot high school seniors and, and kids sports, things like that, then you find a way to contact every single coach or team manager on every school team, every club team, every everywhere. You only need a couple of them to say yes and let you photograph their kids. And then the other parents are going to think, wow, these photos are incredible. I don't want the gosh darn school ones with the baseball bat over the shoulder that looks super cheese ball. They're going to hire you for the super cool ones. And think about influencers. You get the pop kids to do it, all of the other kids are going to want to do it also. Same thing with families. Go to places where families hang out. Join mom's groups on Facebook, preferably if you're a mom, or go to meetup.com and you can join local activities groups for families. Bring your own family down there if you have one. Meet other families. And because people don't know what else to ask when they meet strangers, they always ask, well, what do you do for a living? I'm a family portrait photographer. You know, I got my, my nine to five, but like this is this other thing that I'm doing. I really love doing it. You know, you ever need family photos, be happy to take care of you. You don't have to give discounts, you have to do anything. Just take care of you, provide an amazing service, great family photos. You're not pitching them. They asked what you do and then drop it. Don't keep trying to sell them, but that's an easy way to get in front of new people and advertise what you do. And again, you start photographing one person, give them a great experience, great photos. They're going to tell their friends and it keeps growing. And then eventually you get on a wait list. Maybe you only want to do two or three shoots a month. Cool. I'm booked out this month. I'll get you for next month. Soon you're booked out six months ahead of time. And you're like, well, shoot, do I quit my job and start a photography business? You'll have options at that point. But either way, you can get in front of the right people without having to do complex marketing systems like running Facebook ads to email a automation and Google AdWords and, and all that good stuff. You might not even need a website. Could get one. I recommend it, but you don't need it. You could even do it with an Instagram page. All right, number five and the most important one. Glad you stuck with me here because this is the reason 99% of all businesses start and then fail. Reflection and adjustment. 
this is like the not sexy part that people don't want to talk about, but it's so important. If I do a marketing campaign, let's say I run new Facebook ads for a promo that I'm doing and nobody books, does that mean Facebook ads don't work and I should just give up on paid social media traffic? Absolutely not. That means that campaign didn't work and I want to figure out why. Maybe my landing page was too slow to load and people clicked away because they didn't want to wait for the form. Maybe my message wasn't clear enough. Maybe I didn't present a good enough offer. I don't know. There's there's a ton of reasons why somebody wouldn't have booked. But when you can go back and look at the things you've done, see what worked, see what didn't, didn't and what you can do better next time, everything just gets easier as you move forward. So same thing with your posing, with your lighting, with your marketing, with your prices. If you notice everyone is buying the most expensive package you offer, you need a more expensive package. Your prices need to go up. However, if no one is buying anything and no one's even booking you because you're too expensive, that means you're just talking to the wrong people or you're not delivering enough value. So either way, when you take a look at what you've been doing, figure out what went well, what didn't, and what you can do better moving forward, you can fix the things that didn't work, and the things that did work will be even better. And it's only more money and success and happiness for you moving forward. That's pretty darn cool. So those are the five biggest things you need to know to start a photography side hustle. What are you gonna shoot? How much are you gonna charge? building a strategic portfolio, getting the word out, and then number five, the most important, reflecting and adjusting. If you wanna learn more about any of these things, I've got videos for them here on this channel. So be sure to subscribe and check those out. And if you're like, just show me step-by-step step how to start making money with a camera right away, head to boudoirguild.com, join the membership, and I will show you start to finish all of these things in so much detail, you'll be making money in no time. And that's a win. So I'll see you inside, you're amazing.